It's a mid-September evening, it just finished raining, and we're at Universal Studios. It can only mean one thing. Halloween Horror Nights is back, and we're here to give you a little bit of a preview at tonight's media event. mentioned in prior vlogs, today's video is a little bit special because we're doing this in conjunction with the site that I write for called ideologyofmadness.com. I'm going to put the link down below. Check out their site. They're awesome for things that are like sci-fi, comics, they've got podcasts, um, all kinds of great stuff. Check out their things. I can't speak enough about it. This is the third year that uh, we've been lucky enough to cover Halloween Horror Nights um, for Ideology of Madness. So, um, it's a great tradition so far, and it's uh, it's just a blast.
Tomorrow night, here we are again. It's like a, uh, like a gory family reunion every single year with all of us. I see a lot of familiar faces out here. Awesome, good to see you all. Welcome. Uh, my name is Mike Ayo. I am the creative director for Universal Orlando's Halloween Horror Nights. And uh, this is my absolute favorite time of year. Um, very glad to be able to talk to you guys today about a lot of the content we have going on for Halloween Horror Nights 24. Uh, and uh, it is an awesome year. The lineup cannot be bigger than we've had uh, in our 24 year history. I mean, the amount of intellectual properties we're offering this year, the kind of quirky original content that we've got going on this year is unlike anything we've done before. And we're really happy that we are almost there in opening this event. Uh, in just uh, just under just under two weeks, week and a half away, we we are doing this thing. Um, so yeah, let me, I'm going to briefly go through some of this content. We've got people that created this stuff all year with us that are going to talk to you guys all night, uh, and then uh, we'll have a special surprise for you uh, after all of that is over. Ooh. So four uh, or any type of Louisiana aspect. So it's not, we usually reserve that for Mardi Gras, uh, but we're going to bring it to Halloween for, for for this year. Bayou of Blood, a really great zone. Uh, in Central Park, in the past we've done pumpkins in the in overhead that are all synced to lighting and music. We're doing that with these really ornate jars that, that cover the entire Central Park area. Every hour we're going to do a human sacrifice. Yeah, it's going to happen. Uh, we've got a, a really awesome voodoo queen that our guests are going to see every hour performing a ritual sacrifice. You know, it's, it's the good stuff. <laughs> we've got Face Off. Uh, is one of our scare zones. It's going to be located in our Hollywood section of the park. Uh, we've got a really cool relationship with Face Off and our Sci-Fi Network affiliation. Uh, Face Off is really close to our hearts because many contestants that have uh, appeared on Face Off have been members of our makeup team. We've got two gentlemen back in here you guys can talk to later. Uh, Doc and uh, Eric Garcia, one of two Garcia brothers that have been on the show. And of course Laura Tyler who uh, won I believe season five of the series. Uh, she is from Horror Nights. She's from Horror Nights Orlando. So we got a really cool kinship with Face Off. To be able to work with them and create a really great scare zone in our Hollywood section, we've built very ornate environments for uh, 10 of the Face Off characters that have appeared over the last seven seasons of the show will appear nightly for Halloween Horror Nights. Uh, five every half hour, you're gonna, every 45 minutes you'll see five different characters. Uh, really great, great stuff, a mix of uh, uh, prosthetics and really ornate costumes. Uh, you've got a couple over here you guys can check out uh, as you guys go through the, the, the space. Purge in our New York section. This place is going to be crazy. We have bread trucks, we have motorcycles, uh, we have characters from Purge, both films that are going to occupy uh, the zone. Uh, this is about, this is heavy metal, this is chaos, it is everyone's right to purge. Everyone that has been given the right to purge, that's mainly our characters. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you're going to experience it live in our New York section of the park. So to bring scare zones back this year, we're really excited that we're able to kind of divide the park up into those thematics, something we've kind of strayed away from the last couple of years. So to do that again, we're very excited. Going, moving on to our mazes, Giggles and Gore Incorporated. This is over in our disaster uh, extended queue. It, it's one of the, the one maze this year I'm walking through going, huh, I don't know about all this. Uh, it's really, really great. Roanoke, Cannibal Colony. Uh, every year, like do one maze, uh, every couple years, like do a maze that's kind of based in something that could be historical. Uh, you know, we did uh, Nightingales a couple of years ago. This one is about a, uh, the, the, the Roanoke Colony. This is an actual colony. They call it the Lost Colony. Uh, it's a 16th century colony that, that literally disappeared off the face of the earth. No one knows why. Well, we're going to tell you. They ate each other. <laughs> and that's what's happening in this maze. Walking in uh, over the weekend, we did our tech review. And it's one of the mazes that I walk into, and it reminds me of kind of old Horror Nights. It has that, that kind of, like, old school feel to the event that we used to have years and years ago. It's really, really great. Uh, it's in our B-79 parade facility. So it's really immersive. We can control all the environments, all the elements. It's a rustic look. Again, kind of separates itself from all the other mazes we have going on this year. One of our IP mazes from Dust Till Dawn. How many Dust Till Dawn fans do we have? Yeah? 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 Of the film? No. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. The TV show? Yeah. It's on Netflix. You can watch it. <laughs> Our maze is kind of in the last four episodes, three or four episodes of the series, where the Gecko Brothers arrive to the mm, Twister. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and uh, we're placing our guests right into that bar. It is a, like it is a rock and roll he heaven. It's it's awesome. Um, it has uh, vampires. You're going to see the Gecko Brothers. 
Um, we've got dancing vampires. Uh, all, you're going to see it all inside from Dust Till Dawn. Dracula Untold Reign of Blood. This is a partnership with Universal Pictures. This film comes out October 10th uh, in theaters. They just moved the date a week earlier so that everybody can see our maze and go see the film. It's kind of cool, kind of neat collaboration. Uh, this is a story, kind of a retelling or a reimagining of the Vlad the Impaler story, uh, of how Vlad became Dracula. And our maze is uh, telling a lot of the storylines and scenes that you'll see in that film. So you're going to see Vlad become Dracula. You're going to see his interaction with a character called the Master. Uh, I don't want to give away too much because the movie hasn't come out yet, but when you see the maze, it's kind of a living preview of this film that comes out October 10th. And really awesome gothic castle environments, a lot of vampires, very different from our vampires in, uh, from Dust Till Dawn for obvious reasons. The Walking Dead, end of the line. Uh, Walking Dead is back. This is our third year in collaboration with uh, AMC Networks. And for us, uh, creating the, the event this year, creating this maze, we really want to take a step back and examine how we've done Walking Dead in the past. First maze we did was all about season one. Second maze had a season two uh, scenario going on, season three a little bit. Uh, this maze is all set into season four. And when watching it, we were really excited because the fact that all the survivors kind of broke off and went into different environments really was right for us to be able to create a lot of unique looking environments that we really haven't tackled before with Walking Dead. So for us it was, okay, we've got all these environments, let's make, let's make them all. So we said, let's make the biggest maze we've ever done uh, for Walking Dead. And honestly, the biggest maze we've ever produced for Halloween Horror Nights, and we've done that. It's located in our Soundstage 25 Soundstage facility, and it is the largest maze we've ever created in the history of Halloween Horror Nights. These sets are huge. You're going to begin at the prison. It's kind of a catch-all of what we ended with last year. It follows the exact storyline of season four. Survivors go to the prison, infection breaks out, they all have to flee, and you're going into all those environments, the big spot. You're going into the, uh, the caved-in tunnel. Everything, the end of the line, for us, is terminus. So we're literally stopping right where season four ends, and season five is going to pick up. So the guests are going to take that journey of season four right here at Halloween Horror Nights 24. It'll be very cool. We've got a lot of interesting walkers that we're bringing to the table, a lot of prosthetics going on in the maze. We're, we're upping the ante as far as Walking Dead is concerned, it being our third year. So we're really excited and, and eager for you guys to experience it. It's a maze we're really excited about presenting, but also scared us to death to try and recreate. Uh, it is massive. You're talking two of the most iconic monsters that, that have been in the modern age. Predators and aliens. Uh, 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 Stan Winston created these characters. Uh, how are we going to be able to do these things justice? If we had not done an American Werewolf last year, we probably wouldn't have tackled it. But we did, and we learned a lot from American Werewolf. The, the puppetry that we used in Werewolf last year, we've learned from those techniques, and we've built upon that, those facts, and created all of our aliens will be puppeteered uh, for this maze, and they're all over the maze. Predators are all over the maze. Uh, Fox has been an amazing partner with us. Uh, we, we brought to the table an idea that uh, we want to use the Alien vs. Predator brand. We kind of wanted to tell our own story using the brand, and they've let us do that, which is great. So it's AVP as a brand, but we're taking guests into a whaling facility where biochemical research has been, bioweapon research has been done. And there, we encounter predators and aliens in this very cool stylized facility that uh, has a lot of thematics that are akin to the brand of Alien vs. Predator. So I think you guys are going to really love it. It is a very, very cool looking maze. The most detailed maze I think we've done in a long, long time. The amount of layers involved and the, even the lighting. You know, we're taking a lot of um, tips from the various films that the Fox has produced in the Alien and Predator brand and applying those aesthetics to the maze. So we're really excited about it. It's, it's, it's a, an amazing maze. We're going to do this maze for a long, long time. And the, the, the cards just weren't, weren't hitting the, the, the table correctly. And, uh, and we have it. We have it this year. Now, this is one question we've gotten asked a lot on the Twitter. If you guys follow the Twitter page? Yeah. Cool. yeah that is me, I promise. I'm actually typing those things. Um, and, uh, and for us, it was... Uh, the question I've been getting is, is it, is it John Carpenter's film? Is it the Rob Zombie remakes? It is John Carpenter's Halloween. That is what we're producing. That's the maze that we've created. Um, from top to bottom, uh, the score. You're hearing John Carpenter's score that he wrote. It's all over that maze. You're seeing Michael Myers all over the place. We recreated all of the classic scenes 
uh, you know, uh, when Nancy bites it in the car, uh, the kitchen scene, the head tilt, all of that is part of this maze. Uh, it's in our tent, but it is an amazing tent maze. Uh, you're going in and out of environments. You're going between homes in, our, in one of our tents. Uh, you, we've got a car in the south stage to recreate the garage that uh, Nancy dies in. Uh, so it is down, down to its most, it is a really great maze. Like we were walking through it the other night for our tech review, and uh, it was just cool to be in the film. We have the thing playing on the TV. <laughs> It's awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. It is, it is all there. And uh, I'm, you're, like, you're walking through it just kind of a kid in a candy store going, this is the movie. It's awesome. Uh, I love it. It, it, it. Our team has just kind of uh, immersed themselves in these brands and, and how, to have Halloween in, the, in all of the lineup for this year. We're just, we're ecstatic. It's just awesome. <laughs> it's Halloween tonight. Woo! Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's still technical rehearsal, so I got to say that. Uh, but you guys are going to go in tonight. Uh, you're going to experience Haddonfield, Illinois. You're going to be attacked by Michael Myers. Uh, you're going to hear the score. Uh, you guys are going to have a great time. It is it's just too cool to walk into that maze, and it's all right there. Uh, so yeah, we're really excited. Uh, that is the Horror Picture Show, a tribute coming back again. Uh, amazing show. Um, and you guys are going to hear all about it. We've got myself here to talk to you guys all night tonight. We've got Laura Walls, who's the show director uh, for our Street Zones, Scare Zones, as well as Rocky Horror. We've got Manuel Condero. He is our senior scene designer. Uh, his work you are going to see all over this park uh, in our mazes. Uh, Nick Collins is not here tonight. He was our designer for our street program. And uh, Charles Gray is going to be here. There he is right over there. Charles Gray is our show director for our mazes this year. So we're going to be hanging around tonight. We can answer any questions you guys have. We can talk about Horror, we can just we can be geeks together, horror geeks together tonight, all right? You guys ready? Yeah! All right. The big question is, what's your favorites this year? <laughs> I get asked that, of course, I love all of them equally. They're all my children, uh, all eight of them. Uh, there's a couple that are a little more dysfunctional than others, uh, but my, as a sci-fi geek, I really am excited about AVP, um, okay. and I'm really excited about Dollhouse of the Dam, one of our original ones. I think that it's pretty twisted. Okay, speaking of science fiction, because I think folks are kind of on the fence with Alien vs. Predator being more of a science fiction film than maybe a horror type property. Right, right. How do you bring the gore or bring the scare to an Alien vs. Predator type property at Halloween Horror Nights? For those people, I totally understand where they're coming from, but when you have an alien right here next to your face opening its mouth with its proboscis ready to ram into your skull, I'm pretty <laughs> sure they're going to say, yeah, that's pretty freaky. <laughs> Chest bursters? Chest bursters, face huggers. Uh, we even have a face hugger that, well, we have three different face huggers making three different appearances in three different ways. Pretty exciting. Excellent. Does it tie to the movie at all? Any? You will see, um, that's a great thing about Fox. They've kind of given us permission to take the brand of AVP, AVP and pull from all the different uh, myth, myth of each, if, each creature. So it's pretty exciting. Okay. Walking Dead? I understand that there's a large kind of pre queue to the house itself. Yes. Can you discuss that at all? Um, here's what I'll tell you. Uh, at the mid-season finale, when the governor showed up, and it was a pretty big deal with a lot of the fans, we want to recreate that feeling and go from there. I'm not going to say any more than that, but you will have that uneasy feeling of where do we go from here. Okay. I think one of my favorite pieces of The Walking Dead House last year was actually seeing Merle and seeing some characters that you recognized, you know, within the, the maze itself. Do we get more of that this year? Do we maybe get a Herschel? I'm not going to give away any specific characters, but I will let you know that there are some key walkers that if you walk through, that's I think, the walkers, and if you walk through, uh, you'll encounter them. And the big fans will even see our little Easter egg walkers that we've planted throughout the house. Excellent. So you touched on Easter eggs, which yes. is a good thing. Yes. Last year, I love the fact that you could pick up the phone, hear Lori. Mm -hmm. Is there any early tips that maybe we could give folks? A preview um, about? Well, that'll kind of bounce us over to Giggles and Gore. Be prepared in <laughs> Giggles and Gore for those of you who are the investigative Sherlock Holmes type to find some really fun uh, guest activated trips. Uh -huh. Jack at all, maybe? I, I Possibly. Am not, I am not my clown's keeper. <laughs> I do not know where he is. <laughs> Any other highlights? 
Um, I would say, again, Halloween's going to be huge. It's going to be amazing. Um, I think we'll have a lot of fun in Dust Till Dawn. A lot of the kool dancers that are uh, ripping men to shreds, and that's always fun. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, original properties, this and everything, they always seem to be more of like the feather in the cap because a little more freedom of creativity and, you know, artistic license. Yes. Which of your, uh, which of the three houses are you most fond of? Um, well, a, a little tiny bit of trivia. Um, I have a four-year-old daughter, and I'm very, very excited that she was a part of helping me create Dollhouse with the Damned. Um, just in some of the voiceover work and stuff like that. She doesn't know that it's, she just said, can I be spooky? I said, sure you can, come on in, give me your scariest laugh. And we put a couple different things in the house, but it is very, very creepy. I, I like that with our original houses, we can kind of veer towards the different parts of, of fear. You know, there's gore, there's, there's shock, there's all these things, but, but with the original, sometimes we can go a little more towards the creepy and just the eerie, so. Excellent. Yeah. Well, I appreciate your time. Hey, no problem. We're finally back home. We were able to check out the Halloween house as part of the media event at Halloween Horror Nights tonight, uh, which was really awesome. Uh, the attention to detail was right where you think it should be for a universal um, licensed property for Halloween Horror Nights. Um, not to give away too many spoilers, but the house included a lot of great um, pieces from the actual uh, original movie, like uh, young Michael Myers um, being part of the house, um, the car scene, um, where, um, you know, a little bit of um, Michael Myers in the backseat action takes place. Um, there's an awesome setup scene with Laurie Stroud on the couch watching um, the thing on TV with the Michael Myers scare. Um, there's a great recreation of the scene where Donald Pleasant's um, character is, uh, Dr. Loomis, is shooting at Michael Myers as well. Um, lots of really awesome experiences within that house. I can't wait to go through it um, multiple times and although tonight I was able to go through twice so no complaints on this end. It is definitely um, kind of sorta of on the level of American Werewolf in London I think with the attention to detail and being able to walk through the film um, if that's probably the closest parallel that I can get for folks. Um, it was a really fun experience especially for somebody that holds that movie um, in such high regard. On that note um, I'm going to head off to bed, and um, realistically, I'm heading off so I can start to try to edit everything. So um, what I want everybody to do is make sure that you check out um, the pictures and the print um, sum up, uh, review, recap on uh, Ideology of Madness. I'm going to put the link again down below. Please check it out. Um, we will be back again. Um, at Universal Studios on September 19th for opening night. Um, we've got the Express Pass, so we plan on covering each of the houses. And we'll be back again um, at Halloween Horror Nights. We're pretty much going to live at Universal. And you guys are going to see a lot of uh, vlogs and hopefully be able to catch um, a lot of the intricate details as we go through um, the first three weeks of Halloween Horror Nights. So, um, plenty of coverage here. Um, thank you for viewing uh, the video. Thanks for the likes, thanks for the comments, thanks for the subscriptions. If there's something that you want to see um, at Halloween Horror Nights or you had questions about, leave a comment below. And if I know the answer, I'll be, get back to you. If I don't know the answer, I'll try to look into it for you. And like I said, we're going to spend a lot of time at Universal, um, and we love Halloween Horror Nights. And thank you very much, Universal Studios, for the invitation and for accommodating us. Thanks so much.